To civil engineer, to not civil engineer. To civil engineer, to not civil engineer. What's up you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Diego Guimé, I'm a civil engineer in training from Canada working in the US. And today I got a very special video for you. If you're someone in high school or in college or in a completely different area away from engineering and you're considering to do civil engineering as your major, then this video is for you. My goal with this video is to give you a holistic approach on what it is to be a civil engineer and what the whole process of becoming one and being one looks like. With this said, we will be talking about five areas of consideration in this video. We'll be talking about the university experience, choosing your path, day-to-day -day as a civil engineer, compensation and fulfillment. So number one, the university experience. I think it's very important to talk about the university experience first because it is the very first four years that you're going to be exposed to civil engineering and everything that there is to know in order to become a civil engineer. The information that I'm going to share with you now will vary greatly between different universities in different countries, but I'll try to make it as conceptual as possible so you get a rough idea of what this university experience is going to look like. In my experience in Canada at the University of Calgary, we had a program where the first year was a general year where everybody would start in a common first year, do the same courses and then choose which branch of engineering they want to go into. The courses that you will most likely take are courses in calculus, math, physics and some general courses such as solid, fluid and liquid behavior, statics, probability. All of these courses are going to lay a solid foundation for you to learn all the advanced courses more specifically related to civil engineering. Now here's the advice that I will give you. I don't want to dive in too deep into the schoolwork and everything that goes into it, but as you probably already know, all of these courses are not easy and they will require a lot of time and effort on your part in order to succeed and get through them. Personally, I did not do well at all in my first year and you might kill your first year, you might not, but please don't let this discourage you because it will get better because you will get better as the years go by and as the semesters go by. Something else that I want to mention about the university experience is that engineering in general has great opportunities to network and meet industry professionals. In the University of Calgary, there were a lot of opportunities for career fairs and panels where industry professionals would come into my university, make presentations and tell us a little bit about what it is that they do in their day to day. These are extremely important for your future years as a civil engineer. This is actually the way that I've gotten all of my summer term jobs and my 16 month internship during school. Now, as you get forward into the semesters and through the years, you will start taking some courses that are going to be more specific courses such as structures, transportation engineering, geotechnical engineering, environmental engineering, and of course different universities will have different options, but you start to get the idea that as you progress through the years, you will start getting a better understanding and more exposure towards the thing that you might be interested in doing after graduation. And this leads into the second part of the video, the second area to consider, which is choosing your path. So hopefully it is graduation time, you got exposure to a few jobs during school and you've got a general idea of what it is that you want to do for, you know, the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, now this may sound a little bit stressful and it maybe is a little stressful, but don't get discouraged. By the time that you are at graduation or close to graduation, you will know what you like, what you don't like, and at least this will give you a better idea as to which path to pursue. You have options such as bridge engineering, structural engineering, transportation engineering, geotechnical engineering, environmental engineering, airport engineering, construction management. There is a ton of opportunity for a civil engineering major. And with this, of course, comes the caveat of, oh my God, there's so many decisions. I'm again at a fork where I don't know which path to choose. So my advice for you for choosing your path is to really take advantage of those summer internships and you know every co-op term that you can possibly get so that you can get an idea of what it is to work in different industries. I for example worked in community development and I enjoyed my time there 
However, after my third year in civil engineering, I realized that I wanted to do structural engineering and I went full blast on that. I was taking courses and seminars and I even attended these outside of school. I was so set on structural engineering, you guys, you have no idea. And then by my last year, I went to a career fair and I met someone by accident that worked in building science engineering. I was curious at first and I went out with a coffee with this person and little by little I began to become more intrigued and at the same time my structural engineering classes I started to find a little bit boring in the way that man I'm I'm doing the same thing all the time and it's a lot of calculations and I don't know if I'm made to do just full-on calculations and don't get me wrong like this is like a very limited knowledge that I have about what structural engineering is like but just from the perspective of losing a little bit of interest and losing that excitement that I used to have about doing a structural just made me reconsider my choices. And so here I am now doing building envelope, which is also called building science engineering, and I'm loving it. So I just wanna end this area of consideration by giving you this tip. Don't feel pressured into making a decision right away. You will change, your decisions will change, and that is completely fine. Once you're into civil engineering, it will become more clear as the semesters go what it is that you want to do. So moving on to area number three, the day in life or the day to day. If you got in so far into your career and you're finally a civil engineer, you chose your path, that means that you made it. For the day to day as a civil engineer, I want to make the distinction between jobs in consulting as a civil engineer and construction management as a civil engineer. The reason why I want to make this distinction is because usually in a construction management job, you will be focusing on one project at a time and you will be in charge of making sure that all of the different areas of the project are running together smoothly. Now, this is different from consulting because in the consulting world, you're usually focusing on more than one project at a time. And I've experienced this when I was working in land development engineering and now as well as a building envelope engineer. Now, in training, don't wanna get sued. This is all important stuff because personally for me, I like variety. I like looking at different projects and learning from completely different environments. So if you're someone that likes that sort of variety, maybe consulting is more for you. Further to that distinction, the day-to-day -day will differ in the way that consultants will most likely spend more of their time in the office versus a construction manager, which will probably spend more time in the field. If you're someone that knows that you just wanna get that office experience, you want that corporate environment life, then consulting might be more for you. Now, if you're someone that likes going into the field and just being right where the action is, maybe construction management is more for you. To finish with the day-to-day, -day, depending on which side of civil engineering you're working on, consulting or construction management, there's a high chance that you will end up working long hours. This is probably not much different from engineering to engineering, but we'll take that into account when you're choosing civil engineering as a career. Well, moving on to the area of consideration number four. For civil engineers, it's going to vary greatly how much the salary is going to be, if you're in the entry level position or if you are a senior engineer. I try to keep it simple and I just looked for civil engineering salaries. This would have to be you know, a civil engineer with more than five, four or five years of experience because by then you would have become a PEng. Now, for this, I've looked at Canada and the US and there's multiple sources where you can get a compensation for a civil engineer. However, I decided to go with the government-based websites. So for example, for the US, I used the US Bureau of Labor Statistics where it tells me that as of May of 2019, the median for a civil engineer, the annual wage is $87,000. Now, moving on to Canada, I went into the government of Canada and I got that the median wage is $39.42 an hour. This is approximately 80,000 Canadian dollars a year. Now, it's important to remember that 
while there are more engineering careers that can possibly pay you more right off the bat or even in your mid-career, you got to remember that if you're doing civil engineering, it has to be something that you enjoy. You got to enjoy construction, you got to enjoy planning, and you got to enjoy working with a lot of people. With this said, if you really want the maximum salary that you can get right out of the doors after graduation and with the highest potential of earning mid-career or late career, maybe civil engineering is not for you. Now, this obviously has exceptions as the higher percentile of civil engineers does earn more than 100,000 both in Canada and the US. And for me, there were times where I really considered doing other engineerings. And at the end of the day, I would always ask myself, but will I be happy doing this for 30 or 20 years? And if the answer came down to no, then I always went back to civil because it was what I really wanted to do ever since I was a kid. I didn't want to trade a higher salary for something that I wasn't going to enjoy for the rest of my life. So area of consideration number five. This area really encompasses everything that we've talked about so far because it is ultimately up to you to choose what it is that you want to do for the rest of your career. Spending 40 hours or probably more working at a job that you don't like is just gonna be straight up misery. And I don't want that for you, I don't want that for anybody. And so if what we've talked about so far is something that didn't resonate with you and you couldn't see yourself doing, then maybe civil engineering is not for you and that's completely fine. On the other hand, if you see yourself working a little bit of extra time, earning the amount of money that I, we discussed in the compensation section, and the courses that you will take in engineering sound interesting to you, and also the day-to-day -day sounds interesting to you, and you like talking to people, and you like solving problems, then this might be the right choice for you. The one thing that I love the most about civil engineering is the exposure we get as civil engineers to talk to owners, contractors, and workers. This for me is invaluable to get the different perspectives from different parties and understand a little bit of their world and how it all comes together to build this building or this bridge or whatever it is that you're working towards. And that's it, you guys. Choose civil engineering if you feel like you can see yourself doing this job, doing these tasks, talking to these people in the long term. At the same time, don't feel like you're trapped once you've made your decision. I, for one, I wanted civil, but my marks in first year were not good enough. And so I got, my I got placed in my second choice and I was actually enjoying my second choice. And I liked my second choice, you guys. And even then, by the end of the year, I realized, you know, this is all cool. And I can see myself maybe working on this for a bit, but for me, that was not enough. I wanted to work in an industry that I was fully passionate about. And so I made that switch and it took effort, it took work, it took conversations, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you lose a year, it doesn't matter if you spend some time doing something else for a bit. If you end up where you wanna be, then I think it's all worth it. And that's the wrap up for the video, you guys. Thank you for watching this. I'm very happy that you joined me in for this one. Please let me know if you have any further questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit it a like. And you know, if you wanna see more of these videos, hit subscribe. And right now, honestly, it's the best time for you to comment on what video you want next because I'm barely getting any comments. So there's a 99.9% .9 chance that if you comment on something that you want to learn about or know more about, that I will make a video about it. So take that chance. Thank you for watching and till next time. Peace.